Oh, chat disabled. Okay, sorry. Um, let me just um make sure that everyone is able to comment. Everyone. Okay, uh sorry, are you able to type in the chat box below? Uh, can you please try and let me know if you are able to um type anything in the chat box? Uh okay, give me a second. It should be able to because I put it as everyone. Uh oh, all right. Uh yes. Can you try to type it in the chat box again? <clears throat> right. It should be fine right now. I think. Oh yes. Good morning to you too. Uh, it's actually evening for me, but I think it's morning for you or. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. So today um we are actually going through uh this webinar series which is breaking news and setups. All right. So welcome back to another INFX webinar guys. And <clears throat> I'm I'm your host for today. My name is Wun Hong and I'm an investment analyst at Everest Fortune Group and we have a special collaboration with INFX to bring you guys the good stuff every week. All right, so for the agenda for today, we have key economic news events for this week. All right, so um, you can see right here, I've listed out the news that have already happened. And we have the unemployment claims coming maybe in a few hours' time, as well as the Fed Chair Powell speaking in a few hours' time. So later on, I'll be going through with you guys um, the outlook for today later on. After, for just in case, for the news um, release, as well as tomorrow's um, outlook for Canadian, Canadian pairs and USD pairs. Alright, so after going through the news with you guys, then we'll hop on to the exciting part, which is going through charts. So firstly, we'll be going through DXY, Go, Oil, and any FX pairs that you guys want me to look through. Alright, so um, I feel that the major pairs are actually quite um choppy right now right if you guys noticed like it's very um volatile and has been making a lot of um different movements especially go right go has been dumping uh for quite some time right so um yeah so please be careful when you're trading uh the majors right now because D um dxy is at its peak and i we are predicting that the unemployment claims could be um um, lesser so uh, it this means positive news for the dxy right so yeah so let's go through the news first okay so let's just dive right into forexfactory.com where we can see the news right here all right so for the for thursday um wait let me just uh, filter it out uh, monday to friday Okay, so here are all the red folded and orange folded news. Okay, so we can see right here that we have the, uh, on Monday we have the Japan, uh, JPY Bank of Japan, Governor Ueda speaking, and this didn't really move the markets um that much because if you were to look, so if you were to do um let's say back testing right for news, you can see right here, um Monday, twenty fifth September. 1.35 p.m. Singapore time. All right, so if I were to filter this time zone, um, Singapore time. Oh, it's um 6 p.m. right now. Um, You're close, but it's 6 p.m., not 7 p.m. So um, what time zone are you guys in? Are you, um, is the time difference quite huge? Oh, in Finland is oh, it's not that much of a difference, I guess. It's maybe about six hours, 
Uh, five hours difference. Yep. Oh, Finland is a nice country, by the way. I love I love Finland. Okay, so you can see right here, for example, JPY Bank of Japan, Monday, 25th September, 1.35 p.m. Singapore time. Right, so let's just go to 25th, 25th September, 1.35 p.m. Should be around here. I think, yep, it's around here. You can see right here, there's consolidation. So this news didn't really affect uh, much because, oh, wait, we are on the wrong chart. Let's go to JPY. Okay, JPY, 25th September, 135. Okay, so it's about here, right? So we had a slight, you can see right here, that price didn't really move that much from uh this area because um the um they mentioned to they didn't really, really have much um changes to the interest rates so this didn't really affect any jpy pairs right so G, uh, gbp jpy usually gbp jpy moves the fastest compared to other um jpy pairs right so it's important to see um how the news react to um mainly J, gbp jpy because it's the most volatile one. So if even for such a volatile pair, this news didn't really affect much. So we can uh, leave that out. All right. So for the Euro German IFO business climate, right? The actual data is greater than the forecast. So this means there could be a slight decrease, slight increase for Euro USD pairs, uh, Euro pairs, right? So 4 p.m. 26, 25 September. Let's take uh, Euro USD as an example. 25 September. Uh, 4 p.m. should be right about here, right? So you can see right here, after the news release, we had a small little increase right here, which doesn't really matter that much to us because it's not really a high impact full news, right? Even though it's red folded, but um, through my experience, this German IFO business climate news doesn't really um, uh, move markets that much, all right? Okay, oh... Oh, so it's pretty early for um Tukwasi. Means it's I think it's the earliest since it's eleven a.m. in Nigeria. Okay, so all right. So just moving on, twenty six September, CB consumer confidence. Um, this news didn't really move the market that much that much as well. If you go right here to twenty six September, um, ten p.m. Right, USD news. So if it's positive for. If it's negative for the USD news, right, means Euro USD, um, GBP USD, right, any pair that ends ends with USD will decrease. Oh, sorry, will increase because um, DXY increases. So if this news, USD news is negative, right, bad outlook for DXY equals good outlook for uh, pairs that end with USD. All right, so if you were to see, um, let's just go to... Um, 10 p.m. 26 September. 10 p.m. should be right about here. Right? Oh, that's weird because <clears throat> this news is negative for the good for the currency. Hmm. Oh. You can see right here. But, yeah. Uh, 10 p.m. 26 September. We didn't really have much of a... Let's check GBP USD. 26 September, 10 p.m. Should be right about here. Oh, interesting. It had a decrease even though it's a good outlook for DXY. So... Um, sometimes news doesn't really, uh, can't, you can't really follow news that often. You can't really rely on news alone because sometimes the pairs could move in the same direction as the news. So you just got to be careful for that. But it's interesting why this news um, move the same way as the pairs. Okay, now mind. Let's take a look at AUD CPI. All right, so the CPI for AUD on 27 September, 9.30 a.m., so let's take a look at AUD USD. 27 September 9 a.m. Uh here, right? So uh even though the interest rates was uh 930, right? 
um, they maintained the interest rates at 5.2%, right? So usually when um, the country the country itself maintains uh, interest rates, then it means that they are not able to um, hike interest rates. So this means that it will be kind of stale for the economy. So that's why we have a slight decrease afterwards. You can see right here, out of nowhere, right? Price was actually aiming, I was, you know, I was in a buy for, um, I was right here, right? I entered a buy at about in the morning, uh, I would say 8.30, 8 a.m., right? I was in this candle right here. I saw that price rejected this level of support here. And then I entered a buy, right? So I was in profit for maybe um slightly less than 20 pips, 15-ish pips. And then price started to reverse against me because I overlooked the, um, the AUD CPI news, right? You know, I was... um hoping that they would increase interest rates for it to reach this um, level of resistance, right? So it make, it will make sense um, for price to reach this level of resistance, but I mislooked this area whereby it was in a bearish downtrend. And you can see right here, if I were to draw a trend line right here, right? So it actually reached the trend line. So if I were to use a FX replay, I was right here. I entered a buy after I saw the rejection candle right play right oh let's go to 15 minutes instead okay um let me just cut it right here okay so i saw this rejection candle right here right at about 8 45 before the news 8 30 8 45 right so i entered and then i saw boom it hit and then went down right and then i was uh, uh wondering why it actually reacted this way but it was due to the uh cpi news Okay, so sometimes you definitely have to be careful about the CPI news and uh, watch out for this news as it may affect your trades. Okay, so immediately I was um, in BE because uh, once it ran 1 is to 1, right, I shifted my stop loss to break even, right? My stops was slightly above this, um, slightly below um, this um, level of support right here. And then my take profit was very simple, just this highs, one is to three, right? Usually my targets are one is to three. Okay, so hit hit my B and then uh went all the way down. Okay, so um definitely have to be careful about CPI news because it will affect your trades. Okay. News that um talk about interest rates, um, interest rates, your unemployment claims, etc., which will affect the, the overall economic outlook of the currency, will definitely shift. Uh, the markets and affect your trade. So um, you have to watch out for this on a daily basis, right? Put it on your, in your notes or look up in the website as uh, anywhere, right? Just have to remember every week there's always news, right? And for Thursdays, uh, usually we have unemployment claims and on Wednesdays, we have FOMC meetings, etc. All right, so you have to be careful about that. Okay, so uh, for Thursday, which is today, Right, we have the Euro Spanish Flash CPI. Okay, so let's take a look at 3 p.m. Euro. Okay, 3 p.m. Euro today. Um, right here. Okay, we have a positive push upwards at 3 p.m. on the dot. Okay, why? Let me just show you guys why. So Euro Spanish Flash CPI. Okay. See here, okay, latest release. Oh. Right, results, let's see the results. Oh, I wonder where they put it there. Okay. All right, so for the euro, it was actually positive because the their sentiment was an increase in um interest rates towards the end of the year. So once they have this um kind of sentiment, right? Um, even though interest rates, uh, you can see right here, the interest rates have been put on hold, right? 
So, but their sentiment was to increase interest rates towards the end of the year for euro currency. So this led to this led to an increase in euro pairs, right? Your euro USD, euro JPY. So let's say 20, 28 September, um, 28 September 3 p.m. Right? Should be about uh, about here. Yep. So interestingly, okay. So let me just share with you guys um a trade that I had, right? So let me just draw it out for you guys. Okay, so right here, right. This was my, uh, this was ideally my buy entry for, uh, let me just switch to. Then make a copy. Give me a second. Let me see this for a bit. Euro JPY. Okay, so right here was ideally what I was looking at to have a buy entry at this week right here right uh let me just change this okay uh it was i think yeah right at the 127.2 percent um as uh feeble extension level right here okay so eh, why is this let me change this to horizontal ray. Okay, so this was my buy entry. All right, so this was my buy entry. And guess I, I placed a buy limit right here, right? At my buy entry. And then price, I, for, I totally forgot about the news and could push price up uh, because uh, I believe one of my colleague was telling me about this uh, possible push upwards at 3 p.m. because um of the positive news, right? So right here, I missed my buy entry by 1.4 pips. And I was, yeah, I was um you can see right here my because my buy entry was um let's say my buy entry was here, right? My stop loss was below this slope. So I was reaching, I was risking 6.2 pips for a target of 1 is to 7, right? 43 pips. So my lot size was pretty big and this would have uh, allowed me to actually make some, make quite a bit of profits if I was able to pull this off. But um, price decided not to hit my limit even with spreads. And yeah, this shows that... Um, uh, limits don't always work, but definitely uh, if you're able to be right here and then notice that, okay, 3 p.m., right? You can see right here, 3 p.m., there is news, right? So you can watch your entry point because price may um, either take out this entry point or uh, go uh, upwards for you to take profit, right? Because... Um, I was only risking 6.2 pips for a news trade, right? So I was like, okay, why why not just um hop into the trade, right? It doesn't hurt to hop into the trade to earn this 1 is to 7, risking only 6 pips, right? And I was, since there was news, I was only risking 0.5% of my count. So it was pretty um heartbreaking for this trade. Yep, so um, that's for Euro JPY. Okay, so... Yes, uh, just a curious question. Have you guys um traded this week and how was your week uh, uh for this week? Uh I believe the majors, if you caught the sales, is pretty um crazy. Like in the sense that if you see gold, gold is now at a at a low at 1875, right? If you if you caught the gold sales right about here, 
one even at one nine zero zero is three hundred pips from there, right? So uh yeah, but ideally, okay. Let's take uh let's finish this first before we hop into the trades, right? So okay, so for USD final GDP we have it at eight thirty um later on, okay. So these two news could definitely make or break um go right because what we're looking at will be dxy <clears throat> we need dxy to sink before go can go up <clears throat> okay so um ideally what we're looking at would be for dxy to reach this first support level and then uh, because it's already at a high right it's already very high it rejected off this week right here and projected to come down to this level over here. Okay. So ideally, <clears throat> what is the trend for EURUSD and Brent's oil? Okay, sure. <clears throat> Let's look at EURUSD and Brent oil. Okay, for EURUSD, it actually reacted off the body of this support level right here. The wicks of these candles. Okay, you can see right here, created wicks. Right, if I were to draw it at the body, price actually reacted to the body. Right? You can see right here, price rejected off and came up here. Okay, for Euro USD, right? What I'm looking at would be for price to react to this level over here, which is a overlap resistance level. Um in the long run, I believe that they could definitely recover. Okay, they could definitely recover to the upside, right? Because uh as you as you all know, right, after a uh bearish correction, there will always be a bullish correction. Okay, so this is something that you guys have to take note of, right? So um yes, it will definitely become uh bullish in the long run. Okay, but for now, it will still remain bearish. Alright, so we are looking at DXY to reach this area of overlap resistance and come down. Okay, so you could possibly um, aim for sales right here. Right? Uh, stop loss put above this high right here and then your target would be around here. Right, so in order to complement that, let's draw out our FIBO level. Okay, so we have the uh thirty eight point two percent FIBO retracement right here. So price could reject off this thirty eight point two percent FIBO and come down. Okay. Right. Um. Let's take a look at oil. Right. Um. Oil. Okay. So for oil. Right. Oh, okay. So for oil, we have a very nice um level right here, which is a pullback support level of here. Okay, so if price we re uh reacts off this pullback support level, right, and it is able to reject off this pullback support level, then it will continue to rise to the upside. But if it doesn't, then it will continue to sink. Okay. So we have to watch out for this area right here at 92.19, which will determine whether oil will continue to fall or oil will continue to increase. All right. So uh, hold on, give me a second. Let me check something. Okay, so for this, um, you can definitely look, oh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg, if you don't have the subscription, then you cannot look at it. But you can look at uh, other websites, like your CNBC, right? You can see how oil prices has the latest price, and then you can monitor from there. All right, so you can look at CNBC. Okay, uh, let me see right here.
Okay, so oh no. Okay, so you can see right here for this area, right? You can see um all the different um news, and then that's how you know that whether you are able to um trade this. Give me a second. Let me close this, close this. Yeah, then you can see whether oil will actually uh, move because we have news right here. Okay, so you definitely have to be careful about that. Okay, so yes, so that's how you um okay, so for Bloomberg, right? Um you need subscription in order for you to see um the Bloomberg news. Okay. Um but for WSJ, right? I don't um uh, Juha, do you know if WSJ you need subscription in order to um actually see the news because for Bloomberg, if you don't have subscription, you wouldn't be able to see the news itself. So I was just wondering if um you know if uh WSG needs a subscription for that. Um do you have any idea? Oh for articles no okay got it. Yep so um I would prefer Bloomberg because Bloomberg is more uh they're more uh how would they, how would I say this um not to say anything about these articles but they are more um uh detail with their articles and I think it provides you enough information for you to be able to uh, make calls on oil itself right and yeah so this is um what I'm looking at for oil I need this um candle four hour candle to close above this um support level over here before I make a decision for um oil okay so if I were to trade oil right um let's see on my mobile for oil uh 94.03 does it oh my my mt5 is showing a different price for oil um that's that's interesting okay um yeah so i've a, i've been subscript subscriber of wsg for years and nowadays they have offered good price a month Oh, for just 10 euros, right? Sign me up. <laughs> All right. But happened after a few years of, oh, okay. So after a few years, uh, I guess there's customer retention, right? Like they actually gave you a good price um, because you're a loyal customer. All right. But I think for new customers like me, I don't really get such a good price for that. Okay. um, Yeah. All right. So, okay. Let's take a look at Go. All right, so for go, all right, so if I were to go to the 30 minute chart, right, you can see right here that basically this moves like a market cycle, right? We have a very, very downtrend right here, right? You can see this very downtrend started from 1945, right? All the way down to 1874, 1873, which is a drastic um, 1,000, almost, uh, sorry, not 1,000, but about 800 pip move, right? So, this could cause a, see, major down move, and then we have a consolidation right here. So, you should mark out your consolidation also, and then see how price actually reacts here, right? So, just have to be more accurate with it, take the weeks too, Right, put it at the weeks and see how price actually reacts in this consolidation zone. So very simple. If later on, I will suggest if you guys, let's say you're news, you're risk adverse, right? You want to trade um these pairs during news, okay? Then you could possibly try a breakout trade. So if price manages to break out um of this zone, I would say um uh, it'll be bearish, right? Because um DXY is projected to have a uh it was five five consecutive times that they actually had 
um, a good outlook after the unemployment claims news came out. So I would say it would be a bearish. It seems DXY is going down. Eh, sorry, DXY is going up, right? Then gold will go down. So gold could continue to go down to this support level right here. And then this is where the correction would happen. Okay. Do you guys remember um way back in maybe uh I would say COVID period where gold was a safe haven, right? So the prices were very low at 1600s, right? Then price started to just boom, triple bottom, right? Price started to go up from here. And then those that were in a buy really made a lot of money, right? Okay, so here, I believe that gold will have its correction too. And then continue on the daily, we can see that we have a, uh, we still have very strong bearish candles right here. So gold definitely could continue to fall, right? So later on, I think I'll be placing a small, tiny little lot on gold, maybe like three lots just to trade the news for fun, right? Um, so my targets is essentially this support level right here. A crazy 176 pips. And I'll see if I'll be able to reach it maybe um by the end of this week. At least, at least to this level right here, right? Easy 100, 100 pips uh, move for gold, right? Because for DXY, we can see it's react it's like it's slightly reacting to this um level right here right um we are two hours off of the uh unemployment clips right so dxy could boom could just um go up right here take out um this level this highs and then react off this resistance so that's what i'm looking at all right but of course um this webinar is educational only and nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice, okay? So please um, do your own due diligence and uh, make sure that you have risk management involved, okay? So just to take note of that, please. All right, so my goal projection would be, all right, so for the first support is actually respecting this 161.8% FIBO extension level right here, drawn from this high to this low, okay? So if price breaks this 161.8% FIBO extension, then we are very confident that price would come down to this first support level, which is at this 78.6% FIBO retracement level. All right, which is also a pullback support level right here. Okay, so just to take note of that. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, just to let you guys know that this could actually move the markets quite a bit. Right, so you have to be careful for the unemployment claims later on. Okay, so um, yes, any other pairs that, oh, sorry, we also have the Canadian pair, right? Okay, so for UCAT, uh, yes. Okay, so I was essentially looking for a sell for USDCHF earlier on today, right? Like just now. Okay, so I was in at um UCAT, UCAT, uh oh sorry, USDCHF 0 0.92018. Uh our, this was my short position. 0 0.92018, right about here, right? And then my stops was 25 pips above these highs right here. Okay, so essentially uh I did a mistake of closing out my trade because uh, price <clears throat> wasn't able to break this low right here, right? So I was, uh, once this candle formed as a bullish candle, I closed out my trade and now it's going down, right? So sometimes if you have a proper risk management, you have a proper trading plan, I, I will always say to stick to it and I should have stuck to my trading plan because this would have been a very nice three is to, one, uh, one is to 3.75 trade. Right, so big regrets right there. And I could have easily, easily hit this USD safe CHF trade, right? Because DXY could increase from here. Uh, uh, sorry, could decrease, right? 
maybe to this level over here before um the unemployment clips. <coughs> okay, so yes, um USD Canadian, right? Okay, so for UCAT is coming is respecting this trend line right here, this major trend line you can see, and this first support level whereby we have the 50% feeble retracement and 61.8% feeble projection right here. Okay, so price respected very nicely to this um uh, overlap support level here, as well as staying above this ascending um uh, trend line over here. Okay, so if it gives you a chance to enter again for USD CAT, then you could enter a long position right here. Stops place below this first support level, right? So because if price uh, manages to come down here, and uh, I'll be afraid if price, let's say price breaks through, almost hitting our stop loss, never hit, go back up and come, you'll eventually come back down, right? Because once you break a trend line, a trend line support, it will always uh, tend to retest and come further down. Okay, so this is what I may be afraid of. All right, so if it gives me the opportunity again, I'll enter this trade. My targets right here, one is to three. Risking 12 pips for a profit of 36, 35.6 pips. Okay, so that's for UCAT. And um, based on, let's say, GDP, right? Uh, the forecast is actually 0.1% and it could maintain at 0.1% because you can see right here, price uh, for the GDP, it was maintaining at negative 0.2%. Uh, sorry, it actually was the same as the forecast for twice in a row. Right, so it's pretty hard to predict, but uh, towards the end of the year, they will either increase or maintain um, the rates. Okay, so, yeah, uh, but this is the broadest measure of economic activity and the primary gauge of the economy's health. So, essentially, what you could be um, looking at would be 0.1%, which would not really move the markets that much. Okay, so we also have the USD Core PC Price Index on Friday, right? Um, but for this news, it doesn't really move the markets that much, so you don't really have to be too worried about it, as well as the U revised UOM consumer sentiment. Okay, so just um, make sure to adjust to the markets accordingly and make sure that you have proper risk management involved. Uh, yeah, any other um, news that, uh, sorry, any other pairs that you guys want me to uh, trade? Oh, just give me uh, 10 seconds, I'll grab my water real quick. Um, BTC. Okay, sure. Uh, just give me a moment. Let me see this. BTC. Okay, sure. Um, let's take a look at BTC. Let's see right here. Okay, BTC. Okay, so let's look at the H4 time frame, right? So we can see right here, 
price is actually reacting, uh, is rising up to this level right here, which is a overlap resistance right here. Okay, is if we were to go on the daily time frame, right? Can you guys notice something? Right? What do we have? We have a head and shoulders pattern, right? So price could react back to this uh, right shoulder right here or it could react to the body of the head candle right here. Okay, so just a tip, right? If price is able to, you can risk 0.5% of your account to take a short position right here. All right, stops placed above this head, right? Tight stop loss. And then you can see you can aim for this um level right here, which is the uh bottom of the right shoulder. Okay. Uh to to Wasi, right? Are you able to see this? Okay, so this is one entry. Okay, if price bursts out of your stop loss, right? It's okay, don't worry. Let's take a look at another key level right here. Price could react to this head. Okay, this head over here. Right, this is your cell entry. This is your cell entry. First cell entry, second cell entry. Okay, then your stop loss. For this, it has to be pretty big. Um, yeah, then your target will be a swing. Okay, but for this, your target could be pretty small. Uh, sorry, your, your stop loss could be right here, but I wouldn't risk so much. I would place it above this wick right here. Okay, and then this is your first entry. This is your second entry. Okay, um, let's draw a feeble and see how price may react to. All right, we have the 50% feeble right here, right at our entry. And we also have a 78.6% feeble retracement right here at our second entry. Okay, so this shows that price, there's a possibility Price would definitely reach um either one of these cell entries and then you can take a sell from that. Okay, so um projection wise, let's take a look. To this low. Okay, it projects that price will go bullish all the way, but so, you know that sometimes our feeble projection doesn't always um go in line with everything, right? So you just have to be careful. Okay. <clears throat> right so um yes so that's the two cell entries for btc usd okay so is that uh okay for for you <clears throat> yes no worries small thing small thing Yes. All right. Keep it coming. Let's um let's get the hit the ball get the ball rolling and just um uh, request for more um uh, pairs, right? So that I can um help you guys analyze. Euro CHF. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, Euro CHF. Oh, that's interesting because I don't trade this pair. Right? You can see my chart is blank right here. Uh, okay. Hmm. Mm. Oh, this pair is interesting. Okay. I would have taken a sell right at this area because why? I like for myself, I like to trade uh, head and shoulders patterns, right? Because it's the easiest pattern to identify, 
right? You can see right here, hit uh, left shoulder, left shoulder, hit right shoulder. Then what we can see, the you can take this as your neckline right here. Okay, so imagine I'm selling this, right? I'm selling this, price came here, I sell here. Stops place above your... Oh, the stop loss is quite interesting. Okay, I'll place it above my right shoulder first. Okay, so my target will be... I will say this low right here because this low is more prominent, right? <clears throat> but you can see price almost touched my TP and went back up. Okay, but for now, if I were to trade um, Euro CHF, right? What I can look at would definitely be, this could be my support level right here, right? And this is my overlap resistance right here. Okay, so this range, price could definitely um, come up to here and then you look, can look for sales, right? So this could essentially be your sell entry. This could be your take profit level, right? And if I were to draw a fib, It should be at the, right about here, right? I would say at the hundred percent FIBO projection level right here, okay. Then um you could look for your sales, right? And if you see right here, there is also a shift of market structure already, so it's proven that Euro CHF would come down further. Also, it's at a strong resistance level right here. If you look towards this level. So this could be your potential stop loss area, right? But of course, I'll place it above this level right here. Actually, no, let's put it right here. Okay. And yes, ideally, what I'm looking at would be for price. Let's see, retracement level. Yep, aligning with this, 61.8%. So this is your sell entry level right here you can see comes in line with 100% FIBO projection as well as 61.8% FIBO retracement level right so your stops place at the uh you can place right here where it's a important overlap resistance level right here which is about 13 uh, oh only six pips all right sign me up right you can place it above these highs right here Okay, so this is about 1 is to 1.2, I would say. <clears throat> 1 is to 1.3, right? So ideally, this is what I am looking at for Euro CHF. Okay, so yes, this is, uh, if you want, you can put your stop loss here, but I would suggest no, because it will be slightly risky, right? So yes, that is for Juha. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at, because on the low time frame, you can see right here, we just draw out the FIBO projection, we just draw out the retracement level right here. And we also have FIBO confluence in this level. So it's quite interesting for this pair, but I believe if I were to use a PIP, calculator right uh because it's a it's kind of a exotic pair i've never really traded this pair at all but um oh interesting euro chf is one is to one okay <clears throat> all right so i guess uh i shouldn't risk this little I should put it slightly here. Yeah, so this is what I am looking at. Right. Uh, I'm looking for price to probably close um, below these lows, then I will feel safe. Right. But I'm looking at it being bearish towards the downside. Right. Because remember what I said previously, if it's towards the upside for, for quite some time, it will correct to the downside. But I see that this pair has been quite um is it has been quite uh it has been quite good if you are trading within ranges so it's 
probably a trade within a range kind of pair, you know. So maybe, maybe price could trade within this range, right? You sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy until it breaks this range. Okay, I mean, I don't know this pair well enough for me to actually um, um, give my opinions on it. But that's just um, what I feel would happen. Okay, let's um let's go down to maybe two more pairs before we um end off this session, right? So anybody have any other FX pairs that you guys um want me to go through? Oh, that's that is a Really exotic pair, okay. Euro and okay. Uh, wow, okay. Um, let's see. All right, so let's just use forex.com. Euro and okay. All right, let's take a out. Hmm. Okay. Uh, break this low, come up here. Okay, so just by looking at this one hour chart, right? What I can see from this is that there is a possibility because we already have a Break off structure right here, right? Break off structure. This break off structure right here. Right? And price is retracing back up. So if price doesn't break above these highs, you can see right here, it has already rejected this level of resistance right here. Right? So from here onwards, you can continue to look for sales. If price breaks here, come up here, look for sales. Okay, but definitely, um, if I were to dive down to the 15 minute chart, you can see right here, boom, price actually didn't close above this high and came down. Okay, so ideally, what we are looking at is for price to break this area of level of support, right? So let's just break here, come up here then this is the point where you enter your cells. Right? Stops, please. Um, maybe there will be um, key levels right here. Right? So, interesting. I've never really seen this pair before. Yeah, but um, let's see on the high time frame whether there is liquidity. All right. Price will definitely come right here because we have liquidity over here so this level of liquid this liquidity area just screams for price to reach it reach out to it right so it's definitely possible for price to come down to that level and to grab liquidity downwards okay so i hope this answers your question all right Switzerland and Norway aren't EU countries, but they perform very well. And Switzerland not only even belong to European economic area, but CHF is very strong currency. Yes, uh, I agree. And that's why I think, uh, I definitely agree with you. CHF is a very strong currency. So if you're able to master pairs like GBP CHF, um, CAD CHF, right, Euro CHF, right, then you will profit, be very profitable because these moves are very... Um, this the currency are very strong, right? And you are able to uh, if you are able to trade these pairs, means you are able to trade anything because these pairs you can see, 
uh, right here for the AUD CHF, GPP CHF, right? It's been ranging for quite a bit, so it's always testing patience and whatnot, right? So, yeah, I think it's um, pretty interesting. And also, just a fun fact, I went to Switzerland this um la this earlier this year and it was one of the best trips of my life yes and yeah just a fun fact for you guys before we end off the session okay um oh yes and please monitor um one of the pairs gpp jpy2 all right because um so i have an outlook which is uh right here I think I marked it out earlier. Yeah, so this is what I'm essentially looking at. Okay, for price to take out liquidity in this area, come to this area of our sell zone and we can look for sells. Okay, pullback because it's a valid pullback resistance level. Come down to this pullback support level and then we can see how price plays out from there. Okay, so this is if you want to take a snapshot, um, please do because I feel that this is a high probability trade. Okay. All right, so um, that's all for me. Um, I hope you guys have a had a wonderful session, and it was great engaging with you guys and for me to share my, um. Uh, outlook uh, my analysis with uh, all of you all right so thank you for tuning in to this um trading session and i'll see you guys next time bye bye